Hi, this video is a part of machine learning from scratch playlist. In this playlist, I explain different machine learning algorithms implemented from scratch using Python. You can download the relevant Python files from the link given in the description of each video. Basically, k-means clustering consists of four steps. The first one is initializing the class and rights, uh, which we call uh, cluster centers. And how do we do it? We could uh, use uh, a random value inside input space, but uh, it's better to use uh, uh, to call any random data point or sample as a centroid. So once we do that, uh, if we have if we have to choose suppose three centroids, so we randomly choose three data points or samples uh, and call them as uh, centroid one, two, three, or cluster one, two, three. Then we assign cluster number to each data point, uh, looking at the distance of each data point from the cluster center. Once we calculate the distance and assign the cluster number uh, or the assignment uh, is completed of each data point to the cluster, then we revise the centroids or class centers uh, looking at the assigned data points. So we will look at overall uh, data points assignment uh, and I'll explain in code how we do it and we then revise the centroids. We repeat both of these steps one after the other again and again, again and again, unless we achieve uh, the convergence. And how will we assess the convergence? The convergence will be assessed by measuring the uh, heterogeneity. What is heterogeneity? Basically, it is kind of a mean squared error, uh, mean squared difference like uh, uh, of the distance. It's actually a distance, uh, but square distance and then we sum it all. So I'll explain it also. So these are the basic four steps. We initialize class centers. After that, we assign cluster to each data point. We revise cluster centers uh, by looking at the data points assigned, and then we assess the convergence. If we have not converged, we repeat both of these steps. Uh, either we uh, look at the convergence or we repeat it for a certain number of iterations. Okay. So there are some practical considerations, but before looking at, okay, let's look at the practical consideration first. I'll, I'll uh, show you all the codings at once. Now, the practice, one of the first, one of the most important practical consideration is local minima. So usually K means get stuck in local minima. So it is sensitive to, to initialization. Each time we initialize it differently, so uh, we get different results. This is what we call local minima. Now, one of the solution is to initialize this, initialize it multiple times and select uh, select the solution which has the least heterogeneity. This is one of the solution and another one was proposed uh, by using the smart initialization because of the smart initialization this k-means is also called k-means plus plus or the next version of k-means. The first step is to randomly initialize this first cluster. First cluster initialization will be complete random. We will choose any single data point randomly and we'll, we will call that first cluster center. Once we do that then we will choose other clusters such that the probability for each data point to be chosen as centroid or cluster center is directly proportional to the to its square distance from the nearest centroid or class, uh, cluster center. What this thing will do, what this logic will do, is that it will place the class centroid in the input space as far away as possible. Why is it important? Because it practically reduces the uh, the local minima problem. So we don't usually fluctuate around solutions usually. So this is a better way of doing it. Once we do this smart initialization, then the another practical problem that we have is that how to choose the number of cluster, whether to choose three, four, five, how many number of clusters do we have to choose? So the simple solution is to plot the convergence criteria, which in this case is heterogeneity versus number of clusters. And we will find out uh, the best number of clusters where the heterogeneity is not moving much. So uh, uh, that would that would be a cutting point And we will choose that K as the optimum K. But beware, because if we increase the K, there comes a point, uh, the heterogeneity will definitely decrease uh, at a point that each single data Data point will be called a single cluster. This is a problem. So suppose we have 100 data points. So we will be having 100 clusters, and and, and in that case, heterogeneity will be at least. So we should be aware of that. So practically, uh, this is problem and domain specific choosing number of k. We will look at uh, uh, the problem, the specified problem and domain, uh, and we will choose k accordingly. And there are some other ways. So, but we will be dealing only uh, this these these areas of k-means plus plus algorithm. Let's begin coding and let me explain to you how it works. We start by importing necessary libraries. We are dealing with text data where we want to cluster the Wikipedia documents. So the first step is actually pre-processing these this text document, which is not necessary to understand for you, but uh, because this is specific to K-means++ uh, video. Uh, but still, let me just go through it. So we have this Wikipedia document uh, data frame. This uh, theory grid is basically uh, scikit-learn and, uh, and pandas combined. So once we have this Wikipedia documents, 
uh, we uh, convert uh, these documents into tf idf vector uh, because documents are sparse so we convert it to a sparse matrix this is a conversion into a sparse matrix which basically stores the important information uh, having uh, the location of it by row id and column id and the information data stored in it once we have it um, then we convert uh, the data into a sparse matrix okay so after conversion we normalize all the vectors normalize we normalize that uh, we normalize it because uh, in k means we are using Euclidean distance uh, so if we don't normalize it so uh, the larger and and uh, longer documents will have an impact which is not important because we are looking at the uh, we are looking at the content of the document not the length of the document so that the length of the document don't affect we normalize it uh, this is important uh, because this is important uh, in regard to documents so but this is also important in regard to k-means distance calculation understanding so we have to carefully choose the distance metric whether we want to use cosine similarity or euclidean distance but if you want to use euclidean distance or any other distance then whatever the necessary pre-processing step for the input data is uh, we should uh, do that uh, pre-processing in case of using uh, that uh, distance so again this is domain specific which we should we should work on now what we will do is we will implement k-means for that we will initiate our cl cluster centers or the centrives what we call so this is seed is for reproduction purposes reproduction of the results purposes this is not important then we have number of samples we randomly choose uh, indices uh, from the data set uh, and how much indices do we choose uh, k indices k is the number of cluster that we want to initialize then once centrides are initialized then we assign the clusters how do we assign the clusters to the data points we find out the pairwise distance from the class cluster centers or centrides uh, of each data point so we are using euclidean distance here we could also use other distance distances once we click once we calculate this pairwise distance then we assign the cluster uh, which is a mini which is which is placed at the minimum distance so we assign those clusters once we assign the clusters then we revise cluster centrides and how do we do that we look at the mean of data points uh, which are assigned to a specific cluster then whatever the mean is uh, we call that new mean uh, as cluster as cluster center a centroid value so we simply calculate the mean of all the data points assigned to a specific cluster and whatever the mean value is that will be a new centroid we do it for all the k uh, once we do that so we, once we revise the uh, centroids then we calculate uh, the heterogeneity and what is heterogeneity it is nothing but after calculating the pairwise distance of uh, each uh, of the data point uh, assigned to a cluster center i then we square it and we sum it and we add it uh, for all of the uh, clusters so this this will give us a single value for which we call a heterogeneity uh, suppose we have these three samples having uh, three features and we are having two centrides and uh, we compute the cluster assignment for this data and then we compute the heterogeneity total heterogeneity now we combine all the functions into a single one which we call k means for number of iterations what we will do is we will assign the cluster we will revise the centroids and then we will look at actually condition of convergence so and we will also look at the new assignments uh, how many how many data points uh, are newly assigned to a cluster if there are data points which are newly assigned and uh, continue to be assigned again and again it means it what it means is basically that uh, the the whole uh, k means has not yet been converged and there are there is a lot happening in it but if the data points uh, are not new data points are not assigning to a specific clusters so it means uh, there is no need uh, uh, for further going and we have converged so for that reason uh, we look at it uh, if there is uh, no assignments further happening so we break the loop and uh, we have converged then we print the number of new assignments uh, for visualization purpose and uh, we record the heterogeneity conver uh, convergence metric uh, just for future use which will be which i have already told you uh, to find the number of k and and we could use it in different ways once we do it we plot the convergence metric uh, we plot it um, and uh, this is the function for it and uh, suppose we are using k is equal to 3 and we are applying that k means function and once we plot it we look at it for number of iteration the heterogeneity decreases for k is equal to t but after uh, iteration number 9 the heterogeneity uh, don't decrease that much uh, so it's important to store the heterogeneity values now as I already explained that beware of local maxima and local minima so what we do is we look at what we call this random again and again initialization and we store all the values in this dictionary the heterogeneity values and cluster assignment values and we use 10 clusters and we repeat it for a couple of times having different seed number 
once we do that then we apply this smart initialization strategy and uh, in smart initialization strategy as i already explained uh, we randomly uh, choose the first uh, centroid here after randomly choosing then we calculate the pairwise distances and then for each of the centroid we choose such that the probability uh, is between one and the square distance divided by sum of square distances uh, which is actually uh, guaranteeing uh, this this statement that the probability for each data point to be chosen is directly proportional to its square distance from the nearest centroid now this will make sure that all of the all of the uh, cluster centers are uh, as far away as possible once we do that then we compare it with the k-means by recalling the function that we called for k-means this was the function where we re-implemented uh, the k-means having 10 clusters and these different seeds uh, now we call the same function for k-means plus plus and we store the information in case of k-means plus plus also so once we store information for both of them we plot the box plots uh, of heterogeneity values uh, for k-means and k-means plus plus what we see here is that heterogeneity value for k-means plus plus is less than k-means and uh, there is less variation in heterogeneity value for different number of seeds so k-means plus plus is definitely the winner and better now we just uh, define a function for this multiple k-mean uh, calls it's better to use function uh, instead of uh, calling these functions separately like that uh, we will be uh, calling this function again and again uh, in the next section so it's good to uh, enclose this this logic into a function so this is what we call k means multiple runs uh, so we call it for multiple times uh, given as a, given as an input parameter so given seed list as an input parameter our number of runs for how many times how many times you want to run the k means it's always important to run k means multiple times to uh, get out of the local minima or maxima and and uh, choose the k means which has uh, choose uh, choose that solution which has the least heterogeneity value now how to choose k uh, so for that uh, we will plot the k versus heterogeneity as i already explained this is the function for plotting the k versus heterogeneity and then uh, for various number of k's suppose 2 10 25 50 100 uh, as we are increasing the number of clusters uh, we we run this uh, k means and not only k means we run this k means multiple runs we we run k means multiple times uh, and uh, then we store all of the information for each of the uh, time uh, for each of the k so after that we plot the k versus heterogeneity and this is what we get so as k increases the heterogeneity also decreases as i've already told you uh, that this should not mislead us so for that reason we will not only look at this plot but we'll also visualize the cluster of documents in case of documents so we have documents so we'll visualize these clusters of documents otherwise if you have some other domain you're working in so you'll definitely look at the cluster and visualize clusters somehow in some way uh, to find out uh, how many number of clusters are important or if there is some knowledge uh, domain specific uh, domain specific signal so you should use those signals for for finding uh, for for choosing number of k in this case uh, this 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 is the function uh, to actually print out the information inside each, each cluster uh, this is what we have done uh, this is telling that in cluster one what are the important words which are being used and we could also print the documents in it so from the documents we could say that okay cluster number one is actually uh, for example uh, talking about all the documents which has film theater films tv actors so all of the articles regarding these topics are in the cluster one it makes sense so this is a good cluster so this is how we visualize the cluster inside the data elements inside the cluster and then we choose whether our clustering uh, is good or not or whether our number of clusters are right or not so this is how we choose the number of cluster uh, and this is how we uh, do uh, the k-means I hope so it makes sense now there is nothing much to it uh, the most important functions are actually uh, calculating the pairwise distances whether it be whether it be updating the class centers or whether it be in the smart initialization strategy uh, choosing the initial centroids so pairwise distance calculation is important if you understand this concept I think so this whole coding is one of the easiest the k means is one of the easiest algorithm to implement i think so